There's a lot to like about Avalanche AVAX. It's EVM compatible, all the competence and code can be reused, all the years writing Solidity code and all the battle tested libraries. It's low cost, I like, after rolling out mobile, I'm a low cost supporter. It's fast to finality, it's decentralized, many validators, who doesn't like that? And it's environmentally friendly with proof of stake. But I've reviewed a lot of projects here on this channel. And a lot of this sounds familiar to other projects, doesn't it? We need the checklist. And how does Avalanche AVAX score? Before we start, I'm not giving financial advice to you. I know nothing about your specific situation, and I'm not a financial advisor. I'm an engineer. If you want financial advice about your AVAX investments, I'm sure your bank can help you. So, let's start with the checklist. Possibility. Is there a possibility of this going 10x, 100x or 1000x from here? Guys, all tech investments carry a giant risk. There is so much that can go wrong and just a small chance of success. Everything from that the team getting too rich too early and losing interest to just giant failure. Everything can go wrong and probably will. Then if the upside isn't at least 10x, it's not worth taking on all those risks for say a 20% upside or 50% upside. At least that's not why I'm here. I really like this site. Here we can see the total value locked in all chains. And here is the corresponding market shares. The big one here obviously being Ethereum. One thing that we can see is that if we look one year back, there's been a tremendous growth, guys. So before we say anything else, market shares don't even need to change. If this continues growing like this, all these projects will probably be huge winners. Total value locked in Ethereum a year ago was 5 billion. Now it's 100 billion. So that's the half the answer there already. But let's look also at the individual success on each of these projects. And there we can see something quite interesting. That Avalanche in the beginning of the year, in February, was fairly big already. At one point here even it was number two after Ethereum. Then as the spring carried on, you can see it there in cyan color. It had dropped quite a bit in ranking in terms of total value locked. That was in June. And then if you forward to today, it has climbed back up at 1.4% market share. And right now it's actually at number 6 at 2.3 billion total value locked. And if we look at market cap versus total value locked, we can see that it is a little bit on the high side compared to Ethereum and Binance BNB and even Solana, but it's nowhere near, say, Tron or some of the ones that have extreme valuation compared to how much value there actually is locked in the ecosystem. And if you take an even more basic view, you just look at the market cap. It's 11.9 billion right now. So for it to go at 10x from here, it would end up in evaluation somewhere between Cardano and Ethereum current market cap. Is there a possibility of that happening? Yes, it is. So we get the check in this one. Next, do they have customers? Customers here means paying users. Having users isn't the same thing. It's only a customer if they're actually paying to use the network. And is there? Yes, there is. That's what we just saw here. Those are paying fees to use the network. And they have integrated a lot of stuff in the ecosystem. Not all these are customers. Some are just interoperability partners, but some are applications paying to use the network. So check on customers. How about proposition then? First, do they have one? Secondly, can they articulate it? Let's talk again about those five points I said in the beginning of the video. EVM compatible. Is it really? Yes, it is. If you go into their homepage here, the first link is actually launch your Ethereum dApp. If we scroll down, it shows here how to set up MetaMask. Let's try it. Custom RPC, network name, Avalanche mainnet C chain, RPC URL, chain ID, symbol, explorer. Yeah, so here's my account. Pretty empty though. Oops. All right, maybe they have some kinks to work out. And they have this great bridge where you can pass token back and forth between Ethereum and the AVAX then. Let's connect. I had to actually reload the page, but yeah, now it shows. I have an account here. And if I had some gas here, I could bridge tokens. The second point was that it's low cost. So is it? Let's find out. What's important to understand is that there are multiple chains on Avalanche. There is the main Avalanche chain, which handles the main assets, there's the P chain, which coordinates the validators and the subnets, and there's the C chain for contracts, which executes the EVM contracts. And if we're comparing the different EVM compatible protocols, that's the chain we want to look at now. So fee will be between 75 GUE and 225 GUE. Gwei means 10 to the power of minus 9 times 225, and currently AVAX price was 55, right? And then if we send tokens, say 21,000, that would then be $0.25. If we then compare that with some other protocols, say Binance Smart Chain, that has 6.8 Gwei currently, BNB is 400, 
say 21,000, that would be 5 cents. Is this correct? If I'm reading this wrong, please comment in the comments. Number three was fast, fast to finality. So how is that possible? Because normally you have a trade-off between centralization. If you just have one big database, you can be, do billions of transactions per second. While if you have something very decentralized and distributed, it's hard to get everyone to agree. So that's why it takes a long time until something is actually final in blockchain. Fewer validators, faster, but more centralized. Many validators, slow, but decentralized. So how have they solved doing both? Well, they rely on something called gossip. Gossip is driving much of human culture and turns out that it can be useful in blockchain too. It just means basically that you take input from everyone else and you kind of conclude that and then you gossip it out again to everyone else. And it turns out that after a while everyone will agree on one thing. And it's beautifully demonstrated in this illustration. So, is it yellow or is it blue? After a while, everyone starts concluding that it's yellow. And they get more and more sure that it's yellow. Let's run it again. Now they start feeling that, yeah, maybe it's blue. More and more people get sure that it's blue. And eventually they concluded that it's blue. And they're all getting more and more sure that it's blue. So, so this works as a consensus protocol as well. If there are a few bad actors, they will soon be overpowered by everyone else. And we can look at the seed chain, the EVM compatible chain. And we can see here that the average block time is now 1.8 seconds. What you can see, however, is a lot of transactions. As you can see, it's actually not that many transactions coming along here. One transaction, five transactions, two transactions. So, of course, it remains to be seen if this holds up for the 2021 version of uh, CryptoKitties, which almost brought Ethereum to a halt in 2017. The TPS number promised on the homepage is 4,500 TPS, but I think that's for the X chain. I, the C chain was a little lower, was it 1,500, something like that, but still significantly faster than Ethereum of today. But not as fast as Solana today, but arguably more decentralized. Number four point was decentralized, and let's look here at the number of validators, and we can see on the Explorer that there is 1,032 validators. So that is a lot. And to become a validator, you need to stake at least 2,000 AVAX, which is then $100,000 on current prices. But, but you can also delegate, then it's 25 AVAX. But what is noteworthy is that the validators must pass a KYC AML check and must hold a certain license. Not sure what that is. One thing with Ethereum is that it will be very hard for any regulator to shut down at this point. Here, the sale was recent. Was it the security? Has SEC said anything? I don't know. Maybe someone knows. KYC validators? Can they all be shut down by some regulator? Who knows? I'm not a lawyer. Maybe this has been covered already and I'd love some insights on it if anyone has in the comments. Number five point was that it's environmentally friendly. Yes, it is proof of stake. So, proposition. Yes. First, they have a proposition. Actually, many projects don't have a proposition, but they have one. And they can articulate their proposition. Number two, it does hold up for a brief challenge, even though there are a few question marks. And number three, it is unique. Each individual point isn't unique, but this combination is. No other project has this combination. Will they win over others? Are the lead figures convincing? And yes, the lead figure Emin is convincing. They have this mysterious origin story, which actually seems to lead a lot back to Emin himself, etc. So, of course, Emin is very different from Cardano's Charles Hoskinson. But the mechanism of having a convincing lead figure is the same. So, yes, I think he will win over many others. Now let's finally open the charts. Two things before I start. I try to give you original insights and it's hard to break through the YouTube noise of mass market videos promising easy wins, while the truth is that investment is not easy. So if you like this type of content, please like the video, please subscribe and bell if you haven't already. I'm still a small channel, I really appreciate your support. So get in early, thank you. Second point, remember that charts, technical analysis, fundamental analysis doesn't predict the future. When used well, they give you setups for a favorable risk reward. But that is all, you still got to manage your positions. What's interesting with the AVAX charts is that the AVAX to USD and AVAX to BTC charts have the exact same dynamics here. They are on the verge of breaking their all-time highs. Because of course BTC price has changed enormously here over this period. But they're both bumping up at their respective breakout points. And even the trend is up on both charts. This is the AVAX to BTC chart. This is the AVAX to USD chart. So that means that should they manage to break out of their all-time highs, they're in price discovery and there is no more technical resistance as such. So large online is definitely gold. Trend is up on both charts. And today's dump, as I'm recording this, hasn't changed that. So this is looking good, guys. One, two, three, four, five checkpoints. Next one, flip. 
Larger line flipped gold recently, meaning that we're in the beginning of the uptrend. Let's look. We zoom in here on the most recent uptrend, on the most recent gold flip, and uh, no. Large and line flipped gold here on this date, 19th August, at $30. So the correct entry here was at $30. Right now it's at $51. By the way, you can get large and line access and the process at www.ctolarson.com. So you're not late next time. If we're entering now, we're late by almost 2x. So in that case, definitely use a stop loss. The reason is that if you try to get in at the beginning of the uptrend, you face less risk. If it has already run a lot, definitely use a stop loss in case it turns on you. So it needs one more push to really break through. What could be holding it back is this. If you look at how the total coins are distributed, there's a lot of coins here that went on team, then it's the public sale, foundation, community, there's a lot of private sale, there's a seed sale, there's an airdrop. So that means that there's a lot of people here who got free coins. And usually that's holding back a price discovery because they're up in so insane amount of profits that they might want to take some. But wait, isn't it locked? Well, we can look. I haven't cross-checked if this table is correct, but if it is, the mainnet launched in September last year, so it's exactly at 12 months. That means that some of these just got released. And there's been a lot of free tokens released here in this, this portion. And actually it's going to continue, but at the slightly slower release schedule over here. And I found this site, which shows much more detail for the unlocking schedule. And those who invested under option one, the unlock date was actually the 5th of September. So that has already passed. And those who invested under option A2, this release schedule has also passed. And the next one is in December. So that could be some of the dynamics that's holding this back, apart from the Bitcoin drop, of course. But to some extent, we can look at the BTC chart to eliminate that, even though when Bitcoin drops, usually the alts drop more. Market cap looks a little different. There it has already passed the previous all-time highs. I guess they have updated the supply count after these tokens were unlocked. So it did not flip recently. This one is a no. Is it liquid, meaning can you sell your tokens if you want to get out? Yes, you can. That's a lot of trading volume. Overall, I like this project. I think it's interesting. It's still early. There might be bugs and kinks to work out. But yeah, this is real. Please like and subscribe. See you in this video. Thank you, Tak. See you, Larson out. Hey, Rob.